You're listening to The Real Short Box, a comic book podcast made for geeks by geeks. Hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to part two of our comic shop talk here at uh, We Can Be Heroes uh, with all of our friends here uh, that uh, you tuned into last time. I don't think I will see every cover of every comic before I die. No, no like, and it's, an, and it's impossible. Will. I just, yeah, I just don't think it's possible. Maybe they were put, a certain series runner no, too, sure. Maybe, maybe. maybe guys that like... Um, that work at CGC, they got millions of books coming in there. Maybe, but I so, bet you they still haven't seen everything. Yeah. You know, but, comic but, books, they, they were just this so... Stuff that's, that's no longer, you know, it's not even in existence anymore. But the great right. thing about the shop is this, is that there's books like, for instance, um, you know, First Change Sheet, right? Mm-hmm. I, I never had one in my hand, but, you know, Shot, you know, was a smart guy. The sensational book, one. Yeah, picked a bunch of them up, and he brings it in, I get to see it. So I don't necessarily have to buy the book all the time. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes I, I want a book. touch it. I get to see it. And mm-hmm. then every now and again, there's a book you're really looking for, and one of the community guys come and say, oh, yeah. I can get that for you. you just yeah. like this AS- ASM 300, I always wanted to yeah. pick up a new one, and Shot, Shot was uh, able to facilitate that. And that's what makes the community so great, is that oh. the team, when they're working together, can, 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 can do good things. No, we, right. we, we actually have customers that pick stuff up for us. Yes. You know what I mean? Like uh, Kane Crea, for one. He's one of the, and, and the thing about it is his name is Andy, but we call everybody by their Instagram handle. Mm-hmm. Everyone is called by their Instagram handle. It's crazy. Um, he he has a community that like he knows I love Ninja Turtles, and um, he does also though. Yeah, he does. And it's, it's, so, so he, he's got a. Well, he doesn't part. He doesn't part with anything he doesn't have duplicates of, right? Right. So whenever he brings you, you know he's got two or three because he's bringing. Or he'll he'll call and say, "Hey, I'm going to pick this up for you. Uh, I got. They, do you need this? I they have this here." Or and there's Jr. who does the same thing. You do the same thing. I mean, there's a lot mm-hmm. of people in here, not just the you know and the core guys, um, but there's a lot of customers uh, looking out for everybody. There's, um, That's nice when yeah. someone Art, looks out Art for brings, somebody else. <laughs> yeah, Art always brings the the GI Joes for Julio. Yeah, right. yes. Yeah, well, he knows he has a giant a, sucker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sensational one hooked me up with the first cameo appearance of Gambit a couple years ago for my birthday, so I'm very thankful for that. Huh. You, you know? got you got hooked up, Mr. Sitting, really far away from yeah. uh, for the first second appearance of Gambit or first cameo? First cameo. First cameo, yeah, yeah. okay. The, oh, yeah, that yeah. annual one. I yeah. remember that. Yeah, he was nice enough to get that to me. I looked that. through that. He's like... He's in it. He yeah, say like his hand and then but part of his saying, so, so face. He, his face is in it, but they said because he doesn't have his, he doesn't say a word in the book. It's not his first appearance. That's, that's another yeah. thing that really kind of creases like my pages. Thing, creases yeah. my pages. Yeah. Yeah, the one eighty one eighty one thing, yeah. like or okay. Oracle, on the phone. Yeah. yeah. This is Oracle. Yeah. Or uh, so Dark Side, like for example, he was is, pink. In in uh, pink side? Superman's pal uh, Jimmy Olsen, he's on a monitor. Mm-hmm. And that's his considered his first appearance. Mm-hmm. But in Hulk 180, it's a full page of Wolverine, and he talks. Doesn't he say I'm the Wolverine? Yes. Yeah. yeah, he does. That's his yeah. first cameo appearance is yeah. what they're saying. So, no. And people are trying to push that to be the thing. In other words, they're trying yeah, to really it, push Yeah, but it's, it's really just CGC, though. The only no, one, it's not. It's Overstreet. Overstreet. Overstreet, is Overstreet. But, so it's like, which is it? You know, like it's you, you whatever can't they have, have the most of in their box. But the, right, the, the, if you look at older Overstreets, yeah. you will see that they all say the same thing. Uh, I think the first Overstreet, the earliest Overstreet that has 181, where Wolverine actually became a, a cultural presence, it says that 180 is the first appearance. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then subsequently, the 181 became it became they switched it to cameo, and then full first uh, uh, first full appearance. Mm. And so I think the the market wants 181. The mm. market's always wanted 181 because it's on the cover. Right. right. And, so it's iconic. Cover. And then 182 right. is, is basically second so, appearance considered second appearance. But he's on yeah. there for like okay. one page. It's a recap. So in, like that, recap. in that argument then, so amazing, what was it? What's that book? Amazing. Uh, well, Hero, amazing. Uh, the, the Heroes yeah, 45. Amazing, amazing, amazing Heroes better. 45. Mm-hmm. Amazing Heroes 45 has the first appearance in print of all four Ninja Turtles. Mm-hmm. Right? Not, not Gobbledygook? No. No, no. As, no, no. as well as Amazing one, of, as well as as well as one of the first uh, appearances of the Spider-Man. Black Suit Spider-Man. Yeah. Right. Early, so why early. isn't that then considered canon to be the first appearance of the Ninja Turtles? Uh, I think it's because it's an ad. Uh, the but but the thing about that book, what I love is that um, 
um, and may, uh, is that with the with time going on with Ninja Turtles number one getting out of hand and price and people yeah. can't afford it. By the the way, all the prints at this point. Yeah, second, yeah. third print, even the four, fifth print. Four, fifth print exactly. Are out of hand. You you look to other things that people are, are going to start getting. Like second appearances right now and third appearances are getting they're they're blowing up. So uh, they did this thing with the Miles Morales, the previews book, which was the first image, full image of right. him. Yeah. yeah, first it was previews 95, yeah. now 94 right. is now. <laughs> so everybody went crazy, so people started looking for all those little things, and, and Amazing Heroes 45 is the technically the first time you see the turtles. Uh, it's an ad, but it is in there, and it counts. If they're right. going to count those, and, and I, if they count Malibu's son for a spawn, yeah, exactly. If that I, book the, is the, heating the up like is, crazy is, right now, you, too. All you have to do is all you have to do is, is ask Peter Eastman. When was the what was the first? No, it's Kevin. Kevin Eastman. and Peter Laird. Kevin and Peter Laird. <laughs> What's the first time Peter you Eastman put this in, in, um, in print? And he'll tell you the first time I ever drew the turtles to be printed on a book was this book, right? Don't you think that would be what you would do? Um. Yeah, but I mean, because he should be able to tell you the first time I ever drew a turtle mm -hmm. that went in uh, that went in a printed magazine or a comic book, or whatever, was this book. Right. Because the first four turtle books weren't really considered comics; they're considered magazines. It was an ad for it in Gobbledygook. But the problem with Gobbledygook is that it was printed on paper in a garage, right? And you can duplicate it yourself. You just find the right type of paper and you right. can make so one that's yourself. Why so many phony ones out right. there. Right. And and yeah. and so that is the official first appearance. But for the for the fact that it's counterfeited so many times, they took that away from it and right. made Ninja Turtles number one the first appearance right. of the Turtles. Ain't that a bitch? Yeah. No. Wow. Which don't isn't there in the back pages uh, uh, the first image that uh, Laird drew of the Turtles? Mm -hmm. That weird where they look like old men. Yes. Yeah. They're, they're, it, it's definitely. It's it's when I I remember looking at it the very first time when I was a kid and and I wasn't even that young. Um, and um, looking at it, this is strange. It's weird. The art is weird. But now I look at it now and I'm like, dude, this stuff is so amazing how detailed it is and how crazy it yeah. all looks. And I love it. I, I pick anything up that the guy does. So here's a, here's a good a good thing to ask. So, you know, um, I do spend a lot of time in shops. Right? I go to many shops to pick up books. Sometimes I, I try my best to bring books for people at the shop here when they need them. And I've run into a lot of, um, you know, I'd say – you know, uh, comic book owner Karens, right? <laughs> Who you walk in the shop and I'm picking up, you know, one or two copies of uh, whatever. And when I want to, I want to read one and I want to keep one, you know, in pristine. And and you know, they they get out of hand. Oh, you're a flipper. Oh, you're this and all oh, you're that. And yeah. and how do you feel when someone comes in, you know, uh, two days after New Comic Book Day and you have 20 copies on the table you haven't sold and they want to oh. take all 20. You know, wh wh how do you feel about that? Do you like, look, I've, everyone had the opportunity to come in. No one came in. I don't want to sit and, and hold the books forever. Right. So if someone wants to buy them, I'll sell it to them. Or do you feel the other way where, no, I'm only going to make them buy one? Uh, if some guy comes in and I got 25 copies of something on the table and no one's picked it up on Wednesday and he's dying to pick up all of them, I'm going to ask him why. <laughs> yeah and then i'll sell it to him of course yeah <laughs> that's a good question because... like wait a minute uh why you want to tell me and then i'll sell them to you i love yeah. that uh <laughs> kevin and i and i have been down this road multiple times where we'll go up to a, a booth at a, at a comic convention oh, yes. <laughs> and i'll say uh do you have this issue and the guy will look for it you know and, and uh uh, Ke or Kevin would ask him, and the guy would look for it, and he pulls it out. He's like, yeah, it's right here. He's like, why? Is it important for some reason? Yeah, that's as right. Yeah, right as he, before he hands it over to Kevin. Uh, and I was like, oh, no, it's just was trying to complete a set, and, of course, it was First Eternity. <laughs> yeah. Right, right, because you you want to sell, like, you, you want to get a book at a good deal. Mm -hmm. You don't want to take advantage of the situation, but you also, if you've done your homework, right. and that person yeah. hasn't, and they have that book, and they're selling it for the price they're selling it for, they should be happy with the price that they sold it for, right. because that's what they wanted originally, and you should be happy because you got a book that you wanted, because mm -hmm. you know something, right. and you know that it's going to be worth no, more money No, if you're doing someday. your research, man, more power to you. If, uh, if I show up to a shop, if I show up, if I, if I, if I'm, if I show up for sale, uh -huh. Whether I sell it to We Could Be Heroes or I'm at a, at a you know, whatever sale, and, and I have a, a, a short box of books that I pre-priced, and someone says, I'll take all the books at what you listed it for, I'm going to sell it to them. Because I, I came with an idea that I wanted to make $2,000, and guiding me $2,000, 
if he then takes that box after I buy it and tells me, can I borrow your table and sets up the same box and sells it for $4,000, I don't care. Yeah, I got yeah. my money out of it. Whether he makes more I'll on bust it or his not. Ass. Yeah, yeah. Just like if if I sell it to him for two thousand and he sells it to Julio for a thousand, he loses a thousand dollars. I don't care either way. Mm. Once he's giving me my money, they, they are now his books. What That's he does true. with books is his decision. Mm. And I think some comic some bad and I don't want to be mean about but some bad comic book owners, you know, Galaxy Comics, um <laughs> they they you know you come in the store. A, they're rude. First of all, they're 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 rude to you when you walk in the door. Um, they're not helpful. Like you go in and say, "I bring him twenty books to the counter. And I buy all different kind of books, and I'm buying. I'm spending hundred fifty dollars." And he goes, "Do you want bag and boards?" I go, "Sure, I'll take some bag and boards." And he points to me down the road. And says, "They're right there. Go ahead and grab them and bag your board. Uh, bag your books." Right? Wow. I bag wow. everybody's books. The only person I don't bag books Mine. for. It, I don't bag your book? No. No, that's not true. It's true. Dar- bag, Darcy, Darcy asked me for his bag. Oh, you do? You bag yeah. your own? Yeah. Yeah. But I'll, I will hand them the, 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 the bags and the boards. So, yeah. and, them. and then, you know. And everybody you, got a bag. You go there, and, I, and, I, and, and there's other things I, I won't go into with, with that shop, but it but it's not a sense of a community. He's a, he's a retail store. It's selling retail stuff. Does he charge yeah. you for plastic? And no, I yes. think I think you, you do. It's probably too, the honestly. other person that does. You were charging 35 cents. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, per. He's, so that's the other thing. You, you, you pay 35 cents for each bag and board. You have to get them yourself, right? Which, I mean, I'm not crippled. I can get them myself. But if you're a store owner and you want, and then, you know, and then when you, you know, you want to try to get, yeah. And yeah. then you yeah. go and you ask him, do you happen to have this book? And he's like, do you have a pull list for me? And I'm like, well, no. He's like, well, then you're not getting that book. Whoa. <laughs> right? And I'm like, oh, do you have any? The answer is not that. Right. And, right. You know, the answer we, is like we have a pull list and we're trying to accommodate them. If somebody in the pull list doesn't want it, it'll be here tomorrow they, or I'll yeah. take your name and number. Certain, a yeah. certain yeah. shop owners come in and they make you feel like uh, like you're out to fleece them. Right. You're out to right. get them because you want a book and they have it and, and you want. If I go to a shop, uh, there's a certain shop down in San Diego I will never shop at again. Hmm. And for the particular reason... I went down there the day of a book's release, and they had it on the shelf, or not even on the shelf. They had it in the un, in the back behind the counter, and it's a four dollar book, and they were charging twenty five dollars for it. It oh. just came out. It's funny you mentioned the four dollar book. The same shop that yeah. you just mentioned when Last Road and One came out, I went in there on day one, and same thing. We're charging like twenty bucks for it, and, and by the way, there was no hesitation. It was like, yeah, you know, we're selling for twenty bucks. I'm like. Oh, okay. No, but I'll, I'll give you the worst. Okay, so so last year there was a um, free comic book day, of course, and then they had the um, local comic book day was you know a little bit after um, local comic book day. They usually have books that they release specifically for local comic books. They have a little stamp on the back to you know support your local comic book. Oh yeah, yeah, right. Mm-hmm. And they had this. Uh, I think that six different books came out, and I go into the shop and I'm and I'm asking like, sure. Well, what's going to happen is. You're gonna give me twenty dollars, and I'm gonna give you a raffle ticket. I am then gonna ra- pull numbers out of a hat, and if you win the raffle, you can then buy one of these books. And I'm like, wait a minute. So I'm gonna pay twenty dollars. Yeah. Interesting. No yeah. shit. Yeah. yeah. And if I if I if I don't win the raffle, what do I get? What you, you don't get anything. You're 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 paying twenty bucks to have the right to pay the four dollars for the book. I'm not charging you. I'm not. You don't even get the book for free. No, <laughs> wow. the books are never free. The books are always at a charge. That is some but scam what, what, schema. What he's yeah. saying. What he's saying wow. is that's. Did anybody do it? I don't know. I I I I'm literally. Sure there's some idiot that I literally I literally had books in my hand. This is the second time, yeah. right? I literally had books in my hand, and when I heard that, I said, "Here you go." He goes, "Oh, oh you're gonna take? I'm not taking those." Just like the last time I went down there, I decided to give him one more chance because Julio asked me to go down there, and I went down and gave him one more shot to get something. And he, he treated my sons, you know, really poorly, you know. Um, and I asked him a question, you know, about, you know, I asked him for a question about a book. I said, do you happen to have ENIAC uh, number two? And he says, is it on your pull list? And I said, I'm on pull list. Then you're not getting it. Whoa. But, like really rude. Like really rude. About it. Right. But I was wow. like, I was like, no, I'm not, I'm not, if you don't have it available, that's fine. I'm okay with it. I was just asking if you happen to have an extra one, I'll take it. And he was kind of rude and I just went on my way. I picked up three books, three, uh, uh, three Hulk books and from me and my two boys and I had, a, I had a hundred dollar bill to pay with. And he goes, I can't break that. It's too early in the morning, I can't break that. It's two o'clock in the afternoon. And I said, okay, well I can pay for my son's books 
And this book, and I was, I was pulling a book off his wall, but it was like 100 bucks. And then I should be like, cover it all. He said, okay. So I walk up and I hand him three books. And he says, you, you need to choose one of these three books. I go, why? Well, they're three of the same books. It's one per customer. Can't you read? I go, look, it's me and my two sons. Oh, no, I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to flip these books. I'm like, they both had them in their hands. And you told me you couldn't break the hundreds. I said, I'm going to get these books so I can, I can help you all out break the $100 bill. Mm-hmm. And he went on and on. And he was, giving me, he was shrugging his shoulders. And at some point, I just got, I, my, my kids are looking at me. Look at him, and I just you know what? I don't need your shit. Give him back his books. He was not going to take his. No, I'm not taking these, and I won't go back in there. And that's the hard part about the comic book community is that you'll see people on YouTube and Instagram talk bad about how comics, comic book owners, kind of are kind of assholes. But it's not all of them. It's just there's certain certain ones, especially during COVID. I've seen COVID see to produce certain type of behavior like this, where you're fleecing customers. Behaving that way, it's it's very well. Important. I think yeah, like overinflating of prices and, and creating we, the market to I, that's a, that's a, a tradition that's existed w- well, for, for forever. Sure. Uh, we won't do it here. the The way we do the things around here is a little different. I, I did everything I possibly could to get rid of all the things I hated as a kid going to the comic book shop. Mm-hmm. There's no counters that have con- like there's a counter and then there's a wall of comic book books behind it you can walk up directly to the wall and pick up the book you want if they're extremely valuable they're in, they're in glass cases right but there's no locks on those cases you know what i mean um you know uh as far as like when books come into the store and they're hot the the pool list gets priority to it but i will sense. not sell a book for 25 dollars a day that it comes out right uh the next day if there's left some left over Good for me because then yeah I can sell one for ten bucks right. or twenty. No, on day bucks. one you're not gonna. No, I no stuff. because pull I hated that, that. I mean, one of the worst things that ever happened to to me, which I remember, I'll never forget. I was in uh, Portland, Oregon, and I'm not gonna pull a Raphael and mention the shop, <laughs> but, but um, I'm there. Uh, I, I and uh, I had a, I had my own shop at the time, another uh, shop, Chamber of Comics, back in the day, and uh, I went to visit my brother in Portland. And I'm driving around Portland in the morning, going to go get coffee, and I hear on the radio that Captain America has died. And I'm like, what? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> they killed Cap? And uh, I, I called the shop, and they're like, yeah, you know, it, we didn't order that many because nobody was reading Cap at the time. And it, by the way, you should read it. It was the Brubaker run. Everybody should read it. It's really good. Great run. Yeah, and I think I had ordered five. Mm. And um, there was... Um, Four people that got it and myself. And uh, so they got in their pool list and I was like, okay, cool. Well, I'm not going to be at my shop for five days. I need to get this book now and see what the hell happened because no one knew. So I, I drove to the comic book shop and it, I was driving around getting coffee. It was like 930 in the morning. The shop opened 10 o'clock. I, I waited like 10 minutes outside and I went in the shop and I said, hi, uh, I'm here to get Captain America 25. And the guy goes, yeah, $20. <laughs> and I'm like, excuse me? And he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, we have a couple left. They're $20 each. I'm like, I, I mean, did it just open? It just opened. You just, it's Wednesday. And he's like, yeah, yeah, that's where we're selling them at $20. I'm like, damn you, man. Really? Are you serious? <laughs> and I bought it. I gave him his 20 bucks. I, I was pissed, though. And I said, you could just, you, you know what? Did you a bad Yelp review after that? He, no, he was like $20 it. in. That's the one uh, thing I think I, I wish it. it could be changed. I wish that's one thing that could be more regulated where they say, look, a book, like, you know, um, Bad Idea, a yeah. new, new comic book company just got, just, you know, came out, mm-hmm. are making uh, comic book owners who mm-hmm. buy their books or to sell. Mm-hmm. They make them that for the first two weeks that the book comes out, they must sell it at the cover price mm-hmm. and they can't sell anyone more than one mm-hmm. right and I think that's something that's that, fair I think that's something that comic book shops should be kind of forced to do uh, when a book comes out you have to sell it at cover mm-hmm. for the first week or yeah. whatever and then you can sell it whatever you want but you yeah. have to sell it at cover I think that's the only fair thing to do I'm not saying it, it would ever be done and and how you could really you know maintain order in that way but I think you know Julio or Donald or myself go in the shop and we're investing in book. Most likely we're buying a book. If it's really hot or there's something big coming out, we're going to invest in it. Mm. But there's a kid out there who just wants to read Captain America mm-hmm. or just wants to read yeah. Ninja Turtles. And he's not buying a book as fast. Or his mother, I ha- can't, his mother can't afford. Right? Yeah. Or, or I, ha- I, ha- I had one in my shop waiting for me. I am a fan. I, I want to read what's happening. It's not like the story was leading that he was going to die. 
Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> it was this big surprise. Right. Yeah, they had that plan. I remember when I was a kid and I was standing out line at my local comic shop, Grackle Flint Comics in Dover, Ohio. And they had uh, Death of Superman, mm. which is Superman 75, right? Mm. Was it the white poly bag? Is it the white poly bag one? No, that's oh, the black, black, black oh, poly bag. Black, black, black. They had the black poly bag, which was the first print. And then they had second print uh, newsstand ones. So mm. the black poly bag, the day that they came out, they said, we did not get many. They opened the door and they said, the, the black poly bag ones were selling for $10 each. Mm-hmm. And the newsstand ones are five. So I looked at my dad and I'm like, you know, like, Dad, please. Hmm. And he's like, new stand. <laughs> <laughs> so. Wait, wait, wait. But wouldn't that be more, worth more today? No. 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 Was the direct that, one was more back then? Yeah. Like the third print, I think, well, is no, more the rare. First print. So there's a fourth print. First print, yeah. uh, new stand was even worth more than, because uh, it's more current. But the fifth or sixth. Yeah, four, something like I think. They, they had a Costco. They had a Costco one. Yeah, so I one. naturally then got the second print uh, for five dollars, mm-hmm. and I was happy as hell to get it. And I read it, and that's what made me fall more in love with comic books, yeah. like with collecting and wanting to collect Superman comics. Then yeah. was that whole thing. Now I had his death. What happened next? Mm-hmm. What's going to happen? You got to get the get the next book. So the, the I Superman. then did not know that I would fall into this goddamn hellhole of seventy five <laughs> yep. Superman yep. comic <laughs> books <laughs> within the next three months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they had four different titles that yep. all intertwined yep. with each yep. other well, in one it. shot. And then back and forth, right back and forth. Yeah. It's true. Yeah, Your my dad was paying for. Yeah, it. my dad did not know, and I bet if he had known, he'd have been like, "We're just gonna leave." Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I'll I'll tell you what happens. I'll ask somebody. They can read the story to us over the phone. Whatever you want, son. But it's just we can, we're not buying all these books. So here's so oh, this leads to another question, right? Oh, yeah. And I think uh, this table is really good at answering this question. But think about this, mm-hmm. okay? Would you have considered if they had it back then, reading the digital version? Like I, I hear all these people that tell me it's digital comics digital and version. digital comics, yeah. and I and, and to me, if if comics went digital, I probably wouldn't I wouldn't really read them. I do like to read my books. I do read like to read the story, but I like to have it in my hand. Yeah, the tactile. tactile. You know, you know. I don't know. Like if if I had just started collecting, which I had at that point, mm-hmm. um, I might have been okay with just the digital format if. The, the digital format was free, but you still you would still collect, but you, you but you would use the digital format to read. I it. would collect. I, I'm like, saying either or. I might. Your choice is either or. Either then, digital only. Then or probably collect. digital for for me because I didn't have a lot of money. Well, no, but I mean, I mean, I'm, let's, let's take the money equation out of it. It's it's more it's more of a down the line of me is, DC has has been talking uh, widely mm-hmm. in open forum that they are planning to take. The entire DC. You mean D- DC, which is owned by AT&T. which? Yeah, AT and T, which doesn't want sells the cell devil. phones they don't and want, they, they tablets. Don't want to HBO Max. Well, they don't want to. Right. They don't. They don't want to be in the um, comic game. Anymore. The, well, not comic game, but they want the print. The printing of game. They want to have publish, this guy publish, still. Yeah, publish. They want to. They want to continue the art of the of comics and and all that, but they don't want to. That's, they don't want to be, they don't want to but that's gonna be the death of comics. Yeah, you, right. can't, you, and, can't and look, you can't. You can't questions about. You can't go to the goddamn museum like in and in, in not want to see a Mona Lisa. You know what I'm saying? They're There's not gonna go. One. They're not gonna go. Come to the museum and then you can look on your phone at all the pretty paintings right. that that we've digitally that's, created. The, the way that the, the, it's way, not gonna happen. They, 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 the they, they yeah. can do it, and and it, and it could be a service to fans uh, at the same time. In a conjunction with with right. books, like. yeah, there there are certain titles that don't sell very well for them, but people love those titles. There's a group of people that love it. Mm-hmm. You can continue that run digitally, digitally. right? And those people are not going to care. They're gonna they're gonna be like, I still get my book, you know, I still get to read it. And then the ones that do sell, they should print, you know. I mean, yeah, the, that's I that's think, where I we think need you to can go. Mo- so you basically, can, DC's yeah, DC's going to have just all Batman. <laughs> printed yeah. right pretty much it'll be Batman and Superman Batman no, I mean, and Batman the Teen Titans has done really well Batman for that. and Wonder Woman Batman joins the Teen Titans Batman you know if you look at their animated series mm-hmm. every animated movie that they've pushed out 99% of them are Batman 99% Batman a bad because man. he's the selling point but yeah. even Superman can't sell right. oh, animated stuff here's my thing here's my he's thing he's awesome though. yes here's my here's my thing is is you can cater to both you can do digital so people can read it who are 
you know, I guess you could say the millennials, people who want to just have it with them yeah. Yeah. everywhere they go. Like, I tried it, phone, I can't do it. Pen. But to me, there's something about Having that book in your hand, yeah, and not just smell, a, smell the smell. The book. It's not even that. You're right. It's, it's, uh, I have it, not smelled the book. It's no, okay. it's it's almost a thing where where like Gotta when check up for mildew. like every Wednesday I get up in the morning and my first thought is new comic book day. I you know I it's mean not, it's not your wife in the morning. No. Wow. <laughs> I've been I've been married 26 years. Trust me. I, you know I I know she's there and I love her to death. But every check every Wednesday. Check still really. Mm-hmm. <laughs> check the falls. Okay. You're I good. wake up. Yeah. My comics. I go to yeah, the yeah, kitchen. Yeah. My, I, see, I hear two doors open, and both my sons say, "Dad, you ready? You know what day it is?" It? So it's, it's it's an excitement. How old are your kids? My oldest son is twenty four, and my my youngest one's nineteen. But they've been collecting for maybe like four years now. Oh, okay. And the funny part is, it's 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 totally different. One of them collects Vampirilla, Red Sonia, you know, big booby chick covers. Yeah. And my youngest son collects anything alien or sci fi. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. And, I, and I pick up you know, uh, Amazing Spider Man, superhero stuff. stuff. Yeah. And my sons will be like, boring. Like I, was, I, I, like I, I pulled out the first Punisher, one twenty nine. I showed my boys like, ah, Dad's an old comic, big deal, right? And I said, do you know what this it's is? History piece. Yeah. It's the history. first Punisher. It's a piece of history. They was like, Damn it, but that's not the Punisher I know. They know the the, um, the new, uh, more mature killing Punisher guy, not the superhero, but the um, what was that last book they did for Punisher? Um, Jeez, I don't know. It's like one of the run where he's like, it's really graphic. More, it's like oh, graphic. Like, oh, graphic. Yeah. Wait, are you talking about like the Garth Ennis run? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Garth Ennis. Yeah, yeah. That that's like one of my favorite things to read. Yeah. And then my young my youngest son is into anything like you know zombie, you know aliens stuff yeah. like that, right? So you so you, fun, yeah, fun stuff, fun, fun stuff. So yeah. I mean, so you, you look at it as this is you know it's it's you know everyone has a different way of collecting, and I think digital there's a market for digital. There's a market for digital. I just no, think... I, I, I believe so. I mean, the the kids like yeah. I I can't do it. I can't do the digital. Well, here's the thing. I tried it. Like, well, uh, the, the, think about it also in terms of formatting too. Like, uh, 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 the way the product is delivered. Uh, if you speak with people who enjoy manga, they're not reading any, which is the biggest uh, actual printed public, uh, uh, market out there. That's true. Currently, yeah. Yeah. and they want you know like gra- like collections. You know, they don't want, like, a 22-page pamphlet. They or want a, a, a trade yeah. or a trade or a collection or whatever. Uh-huh. And that's probably more speaks to what the market is going to need to move towards if they want to expand on the physical product. I agree. Mm. I agree. Because my uh, nephew, like, you're right. Yeah. Like, my and nephew only collects. Genre, too, because as your kids are mm-hmm. evident of, it's not only about superheroes anymore. No. Yeah. No. I mean, so, like, the you're saying, like, the graphic novel, then, is going to be the first appearance of characters. Could no, not necessarily. But I think that will be the way that people are getting in and collect the collector. Well, a lot of guys like that. Walking yeah. Dead, the trade paperback. That's how I was got into yeah. it because it was, for obvious reasons it was easier. So I would be able to collect all the yeah. different. Same here. A lot that's of how I started reading. reading. Even yeah. the even the uh, graphic novel collector is becoming parallel to the comic book collector. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. because they, people, they a lot of people buy the graphic novels. Because they take up less room than the comic books. Like right. my, my nephew, yeah. all he collects is all he buys is omnibus. Right. He, wow. I mean, that's all he's got. His whole room is just wall to wall omnibus because he wants to read the whole story. Oh, now you have graphic novel and omnibus speculators too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot of you get asked that question yeah. right about but out of print books. If you're looking every at every like, day, like a run, for example, for Invincible. I did not read Invincible when it first came out. Same thing with Chew. Did not read those when it first came out. I'm not going to try to go back and buy every single issue so I can read it. I'm just not going to do it. And no, I, I've and, done it. And I don't want to do it with the trades either because I don't want to spend the money because I don't know, first of all, if I'm, I'm going like to like it. it. Like yeah. it. So what I did was I got the library app for the library for their digital, mm-hmm. and then I started reading uh, Chew in uh, Invincible uh, digitally on my tablet, on my Fire tablet from Amazon. So I started reading that. And We're not a, we're not a sponsor, by the way. No, they're not sponsoring. We're <laughs> so, open, though. <laughs> right, but uh, so like it, it just became natural for me then to be like, oh, this is, I'm gonna go like on a on a road trip. I'm gonna take my tablet with me, and then I can read Invincible and Chew while I'm, I'm on the road, Good and I lady. don't have to take Nerd. my trade that, with me. Books with you, yeah. yeah, in in damage that or individual books and get those fucked up somehow. It's mm-hmm. those are my road books, you know, is my digital books. Mm-hmm. So for me, 
that transferred over that way, and, and that's why I like digital for that. Your road book should be Blue Beetle because you don't give a shit those get trash anyway. <laughs> yeah, that, that's it goes true. back to what I told about, what I said about the three different types of collect the combo people. Mm -hmm. You know, the digital people are the readers. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, they don't. I mean, maybe some of them need physical just because of the limit they and their know, age. Yeah, their age. But for the most part, you know, they'll take a graphic novel, which you know is whatever price on Amazon. Right. Then you got the collector who will probably try to buy the nice omnibus edition, you know. We like need a, a we need series. we need the readers because they're, they're the readers who read and get rid of books mm -hmm. that then the collector buys. That's the, the what, point of it's like a it's like a it's like a cycle, right? It's you a have to system. you need to have the reader in order for the collector to 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 or the flipper to buy the reader's book to then put in his collection or, or sell. But that's why you get the books, because you get the book from the reader. Or the, if people hate flippers, but a flipper is a guy who's gonna that you're gonna find the book from. Because yeah. if we only had collectors, you would never be able to find the book. Nope. Because right. everyone would collect it. You have but to have a flipper. The flip side reader. of that is flippers will prevent the collect the reader and the collector from getting their yeah, books. Sure. At, at some point, and then but then you have the '90s where they printed a million copies of every book, yeah. so it didn't make a difference. Do you think but, they're gonna start doing that more? No, right. they're doing less print runs now. Right. Do you think we're gonna right. start seeing an increase on print? I don't think no. so. No. There's no. less. Well. No, no. Here, this is one of the things. Well, we're getting, we're getting, we're getting. What happened? Third to, what happened right. to vinyl? Um, you know, 12, 13 years ago. It just maybe a little longer than that, right? No, about ten years. Ago. Yeah, it just completely disappeared. But now it's back. Now it's like it you back. go to Amoeba Records. It's like the biggest section they got is vinyl. You know, um, people, people want. Something. Yeah, and the funny part is, it's new vinyl. Yeah. They're, they're, well, now they're, they're re, repressing the vinyl. Like, so you you go to a place and like my my cousin comes over and he brought me three records from my son and I said you realize these are brand new what are you talking about this is an old old record yes it's an old record that came back a long time ago but this is a new printing yeah. it's brand new yeah alright so that is yes and no the problem the, the record industry is now going moving into the model of comic books almost where limited print run of audiophile mm -hmm. vinyl mm -hmm. is now a big thing mm -hmm. yes so you'll get like a like a, a $80 record that they only print 5,000 copies yep. of. Right, right, right. And it goes out of print after a year, yep. and it jumps from 80 to 200. No, yeah, Mondo oh, does that. Yeah. Oh, Mondo does well, that. Well, the audio, what is it? Uh, audio, uh, Analog Productions, uh, uh, the Blue Note Jazz Records they reissued, mm -hmm. those things go for ridiculous amounts of money. But the problem is a lot of times the record company will will, 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 will print, like say Guns N' Roses, right? Print the Guns N' Roses record again. Mm -hmm. And then you'll find that you know, six months later that you can't find that record anymore, right? But then you'll find the same record the cover's a little different, but it's the same songs. They just rearranged it somehow, and they yeah. sell it again. It's just, they just keep doing it, right? It's like now, right. we don't have a million copies of, of a book, but now we have second, third, fourth, fifth print variants. So the, the way they do it by not having a huge print run of the book is they make a variant, four or five different variants, and then they make a second, third printing. If the first printing sold out, then they'll do a second, and then a third, and so on and so forth. I don't think we're going to lose... Uh comics i mean maybe for a little while but they'll end up coming back because people want it right now the 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 bubble that people keep talking about there's no uh, bubble I, I don't think it, it's true it's i think different. there's a there lot is. Is, yeah. there's a there bubble is, but it's different this time it's no but different. it's a yeah. correction that's gonna it's happen. the thing yeah. with me is, is no, yeah. i don't even the think so. is, there's I, so many people investing now I that's the thing yeah 90 percent of my customers i'm gonna say about 80 percent of my customers are investors they got that and not even read books yeah and then the other, the other, the other part are readers and, and little a couple kids here and there. Um, that's it. I mean, everybody is speculating. Everybody's yeah, doing. Yeah, COVID has caused speculation. But no, but I'll tell you this. Every I'll tell you this. For every, for every twenty guys that come in here to buy books on spec, mm -hmm. at least four of those twenty guys end up becoming fans and readers. Yeah. Like when, when you know, I collected when I was younger, and then yeah. I stopped for a long period of time, and then I got back into it mainly as you know a form of of getting big books to save to be able to make some money right. and I read a book and I read and I bought the next one and, and I was and I was buying two because I was reading the story but you're investing I am but I'm saying but what I'm saying is most guys who are investing like um, guys who are buying big books they're buying big books but they're also reading and so it's there are just investors who just buy to invest comics are dogecoin or or bitcoin yeah but yeah, yeah. but it won't it will will take a 
take a back seat for a small period of time and then kick back in again. They'll never. There's never a point where you're going to see this giant dumpster. Well, yeah, pull it's, the comic. it's like Blue Wolverine. Books, first, we'll yeah, yeah, first Wolverine is not fine. going to be something that's no. going to be like a $500 book again for no. like a mid grade. Yeah, Deadpool is sustainable. But Kevin, what's a blue chip book? A blue how chip many of those book? are there? Yeah, it makes no yeah. sense. Yeah. I think but the Deadpool what, one will go that's, down. That's what makes sense. It will go down. It'll go down, but nothing. Right, but it'll be everyone says everyone says blue chip book. What's a blue chip book again? To me, a blue chip book. I understand that part, but Hulk one is a blue chip book to you. In 30 years, Fallout 4 will be a blue chip book. Oh, I agree. It's a blue chip book right now. Right, I'm saying, but I'm, I'm saying it's, it's a modern day blue chip book. Every, yes. every, every so often, the new, like my son will have in his era of blue chip books and so on and so forth. So there's always going to be, and Hulk 1 will be, you know, super out of the atmosphere at those right. days, in, the, in those times. Ultra Fallout right. 4 will eventually, it's going to be this. I was telling Donald about this. No, no. Uh, Julio has the best way to say it. Well, okay. Ultimate Fallout 4 will be the what? Amazing Fantasy 15. I was about to say that. I was about to say that. I've because been that for because years, the man. Gen Z that's grown up right now, Miles Morales is their spider. Yeah, yeah. Well, exactly. think about it. You exactly. think about it now because a lot of people that are in their 80s or whatever, fucking uh, Alan Scott is that's their the Green Lantern. Lantern. Yeah. Yeah. Them. And we're all like, it's it's Hal Jordan, obviously. And yeah. then or or Kyle or, Gardner, or, or, or for Stewart. for Kyle Rayner for, for Kyle like Rayner people like right? myself that I didn't Kyle Gardner ever caught on that didn't fall for any of these though. Green Lanterns. Yeah. Well, now that the show, yeah, now that the I, show, I, I'm not very or excited like about the show. West, but for but, some people but I can guarantee you that this comic book craze that we've been seeing would not have been heightened as high as it has been if it wasn't for the Marvel movies having succeeded as well as they've done. Major factor, no doubt. If they had been a giant turd on the wall they and no film. one made any more Marvel movies, that'd be it. Right. We would all still be talking about Batman in the glory days of the Superman movies. Right, right. You well, know? I mean, yeah. Christopher Reeve's the man. I mean, yeah. Dead, by the way. Well, he's our Superman. He is. Still. He's, yeah. Still. Yeah. He's, he's the best Superman. one. And then, like, you so know. Michael Keaton is still Batman. No. Batman. No. no. Stop Batman. drinking, Kevin. Michael Keaton was okay. What the Marvel movies did Michael right. Michael Keaton voted number one in our podcast. That, of course um, he did, because a bunch of you guys are in there. You guys? What are you trying to say? You, you people? people? You people? Yeah, that's right. Wow. You comic book people. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, Christian Bale you was a better Batman. You you people to a, a black man. Well, Marvel did like really that. smartly that helped comic book collectors Ooh. is they tagged the cool on Thanos man. to the end of that Avengers movie. Yeah. Oh, perfect. brilliant. If they didn't say that this, mo- this story is going to continue here, here, and there, and we're going to tease this villain... The comic book, uh, the boom that happened, what's now going on eight years, would not have been the same. Well, even before that, in 2008 with Iron Man, when you had Samuel Jackson's Nick Fury make an appearance, yeah. that was also huge. Because he said there's a bigger world but out there. But they didn't there. create the same. Initiative. Yeah, true. They didn't but, create the same uh, acceleration mm-hmm. that Thanos did. Mm-hmm. The but Thanos it, but it was the... Thanos is the took it to another level. No doubt, that, uh, is the the uh, the wave that ro- uh, t- the tide that brought all boats yeah. up. But they were and they were really smart on how they continued it on, how they continued the story on. They could have easily did the second movie and it was trash, and then it would have just stopped right there. It was trash. Well, movie. <laughs> well, the, ori- the original cut. It wasn't oh, that okay. bad. It wasn't. It, I mean, no, it was entertaining. I was entertained. It's Age fine. Of Ultron, it's not the great. I I tell you what. You if you <coughs> go back now. And you look at uh, Avengers: Age of Ultron. You see better connections now. It and it's actually probably one of the better Avengers films, in my in my personal opinion. It is a great Avengers film. It it sh- it should be much higher on everybody's list than what we give it credit for, and that's because it it came it was it was either the chicken or the egg, and you didn't know which one it was because you couldn't see what was in front of you because they they didn't show you what was going to happen in the future. When, and they were telling you in the film. So now that you've seen all that, if you go back and watch it, everything kind of falls into place and it makes much more sense. So it's a film that only makes sense once the other movies after it came out. Correct. That's the problem with that movie. Now it's a great movie. Now. That's the only reason why. And I think we're going to see you know, Ultron like again. In a way. Ultron Watchmen, will be Watchmen. back in, in the Marvel well, Universe. It's a better movie than years later when you look back. Well, no. The, the, well, the, Watchmen that was a great Batman movie when Begins. it came out. Batman Begins. You watch it, and I first time I saw it, I was like, oh, "Okay, it's it's a good movie, not great." But then watching the second and the third, and seeing how important that first one was, it connected to all the storylines there. Dude, Batman Begins is a fantastic oh, yeah. movie. It was a better movie for me the second, third time I watched it. Look, oh, I mean, Watchmen is a great movie. It just wasn't a good kids movie. 
Well, of course, no, of course, not of course, it's written in a great kid's book. I yeah. know, but I mean, you know, it. But it's like Deadpool, right? You know, Deadpool was a was a funny movie, but you know, I was I was in the in the crowd and it was like parents with their kids and they're watching it. and You saw all the, all the parents like kind of like not sure what to do yeah. because you you know you you know you figure it's a superhero movie and then they go there and you see you know what you know all the innuendos and all that stuff. You know, Batman Begins was. By far, I thought one of the better Batman movies out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, no, I I really love that movie, and, and, it, and it took me a little while because I mean uh, the second one was fantastic. The Dark Knight was a fantastic film. Absolutely. Yeah, and but it's it's one I've never seen. Like I, I mean, I saw it once in the theaters, and I've never wanted. I've never been compelled to want to see it again. Oh man, it's so well like, done. Do you Just, know, I don't know. What, I don't know if this is the case for you, but uh, do you still have TV? You still have like. Cable or whatever. Uh, no. You not cut the cord yet. I cut the cord a long time ago. I mean, I've got like Netflix, Disney Plus, you know, I'll Amazon, you that really kind of stuff. Paramount Plus, yeah. HBO Plus. Yeah, well, I get HBO right. Now. NBC. Yeah. Peacock. You know what's really good Peacock. about that movie is it. Um, uh, Tarantino said this about Pulp Fiction. It's a movie you can come into at any point and just like you know, oh, I'm gonna stick with this now. Come in the middle. You already seen it. You already know. Yeah. You know, and then you you just ride it out. You know? Yeah. Because it works. The, the whole movie, I think, has a cohesiveness that works. Look, the third one, not so much. Mm-hmm. Don, Donald watches no, whatever no, he can... No, the the look, third one's probably the weakest one, but it's still not a bad movie compared, is, to, Donald compared watches, to all the other Donald watches whatever released. he can watch from his telescope in his neighbor's window. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm and saving. He, I'm saving money. Yeah. That's how I save money, yeah. Like he doesn't, and you it, call him... It, it, he got really uh, good at reading lips. Puts bro. the phone close to the No, he got TV. really good at reading lips. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I think we're gonna we're gonna call it there for the evening. Thank you, gentlemen, so much for yeah, being a part of this. It was, it was a lot of fun. Great discussion. Yeah, yeah. and uh, Kevin, uh, for those that don't know, they can find our podcast. We do a live podcast every Monday, Monday usually at seven thirty p.m. Pacific on uh, on Santa YouTube time. live mm-hmm. on, under the page Rumble Spoon Productions. You can find us there. Um, you can also find our audio podcast, which you're listening to right now. You can find us on uh, Spotify. Spotify, yeah. Sprecher. Uh, Sprecher. You can find us there. Stitcher. Stitcher, yeah. You can find us on Stitcher Apple? still. Uh, Apple Podcasts, yes. Yeah. Google. Spotify. Uh, yeah, Are both of those. Uh, iHeartRadio. You can find I us on there. Radio. We are on just a host of pretty much anything and in, in everywhere that you can find us. Uh, we do have a lovely new sponsor now. We have we have a couple of them. We have uh, Half's Hot Sauce. Uh, yeah. which is a great hot sauce company uh, based out of Ohio. And we have Splattered Frog Brewing, which is a great brewery based out of Texas, the, the great state of Texas. Lone Star State. We're, not, we're, we're excited about getting to try some of that. Okay. Yeah, right, right. Hot sauce hot and beer. Sauce Can't go beer. wrong. Yeah. Hot, hot sauce, sauce and beer. And beer. Yeah, so thank you, you everybody. something to wash it down with. Yeah. yeah, thank you for tuning in, everybody. And if we don't see you out and about anytime soon, maybe we will see you actually here. At the wonderful... Marvelous, delicious, righteous, and wondrous comic book shop. Bye. This has been The Real Short Box. We'll see you at the comic shop. Thanks for listening.